Good morrow, everyone. Good morrow, everyone. Right here, as everyone comes in, let's pray. Jesus, thank you for a lovely morning, for your goodness, mercy. We just love being together as sons of God, to be part of your story, your goodness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Cloud of Witnesses, for praying and interceding. We bless you. We honor you. Thank you, angels, for administering, rolling with our scrolls. Thank you for the glory of Yahweh that is firstly in us and then around us. And we just come, we ark together as sons of God to facilitate the spiritual atmosphere, not only in this place, in our area, in the city. We speak to the four corners of this city and the angels in the north, the south, the east, and the west to facilitate the movements of the Holy Spirit in this city. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Welcome. It's lovely to have you all here today. Welcome to any new people. 
It is lovely to have you here. I usually crawled under the chair when they asked me to stand. I will not do that to you. <laughs> but know that you are loved and that you are more than welcome to be here with us and have fun. We as a body of Christ want to have fun. If church, oh my witness. <laughs> Worship, no words. Our worship is different because the worship team steps in the throne room and we release and we go from there. It might be new for you, but after a couple of services, you get the groove of it. You step in and you start to flow as the Holy Spirit moves. You will see on my left is our communion table. You can partake of communion during the service. The rack is in the middle at the back. So you know is the one that has the wine in, the one in front with juice, you can choose. We obviously put the one at the back so that the kiddies don't by accident go and take. <laughs> Hopefully by accident. <laughs> and then um, lastly, our trading. We've got trading baskets around so we don't send bowls around for offering tithes during worship. You go trade, you go offer your tithing, etc. And, um, and we've also got a snap scan. If you want to use snap scan, our banking details are also there at the back if you'd like to just register banking details. And then lastly, on the 5th of November, super excited for Realms of the Living Letters. It's really going to rock your world. If you want to take your prayer to the next level, your intimacy, your relationship with Jesus, that is the day you want to attend. So you can get um, these things here, and they are lists at the back. So in other words, if you can't pay today, but you want to attend, please put your name on the list. It's there where Lyle is sitting. Lyle is the handsome guy at the back with those awesome biceps waving. He is single, if you want to know, and we'll take applications after the service. <laughs> <laughs> it's the wedding day today, you know, it's, you don't know what can happen. <laughs> today I also want to do a release um, as we had a change of directorship and we just want to release that in the spirit as we step into that and we'll do that towards the end of the service. Gosh, you guys need, to, can we have communion first? Go for, go for the wine first. It's a belief. <laughs> Alrighty, I just want to do some acknowledgements just before we start the service. And um, I want to encourage you that when they come out and do the dance with every dance, engage. Use it as part of worship. And we're going to flow into worship from there. But a couple of songs. Um, by Lisa Dasavit, by Laura C., Robert Stearns, and the Gilead Dance Ministry, Lily Dance Ministry, and Center Stage Worship. <laughs> I couldn't pronounce that other word. It's what? Vivace. Yes, like that was word. This word for Afrikaner, right? <laughs> Vivace. Alrighty. And then just lastly, if you want to be on our SMS, I didn't send an SMS yesterday, but if you want to be on the SMS list, there's the paper at the back, and then you can put on there. Alrighty, um, Maria, just want to do something before you dance, after you've chatted. Could the worship team come up and the dancers? Good morning. Um, We've gone through tabernacles. We've had our seven days. It was fitting that we had such a big day on the seventh day, in time, out of time, and it was the nations. And now look how few of us are here today, and that's also right. Today's the eighth day. It's the day of eternity. It's the day of Shemini at Sidret. We are honoring the Holy Spirit, God the Father, and the Bridegroom King. The dancers will do the first dance, which will be the betrothal covenant. The spirit and the bride say, come. Come to the marriage supper of the Lamb. 
the Spirit, we honor Him. We do everything in Him. After the worship, which is immediately after this dance, we will be doing, Laura C., a word out of heaven. We are all a word out of heaven. And we will have the hoppa here, and we're inviting the congregation to come through the hoppa and to kneel at the altar and spend some time with God the Father, who released you into the natural. Shah will then share with us, and I trust Song of Solomon might appear, as it did very much at the beginning of the year. And the last dance is for our bridegroom king. With the dancers, we're going to do Come Dance With Me. And it is about the victorious bride, the one that knows we've won the victory. It is not about who we are. It is incredible to me that Jesus is marrying a bride equal to the bridegroom. And that's you and me. It's how, how does that happen? But he will not marry beneath him. So join us today. Join in the dance at the end. And let's celebrate the eighth day.
Okay, we can stand. We're still going to go into worship. the king of the mind be the mountain where I run the fountain I drink from oh he is my song let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide the ransom for my life oh he is my song you are good, good, oh, and you are good, good, oh, and you are good, good, oh, and you are good. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days, oh, he is my song, and you are good, and good.
circumstance you are good no matter what we go through you are good no matter what life throws away you are good for you are good always good and you are good you're always, always good, and you are good. Always, 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 you are good. For you are good. Oh, in the darkest valley, you are good. Oh, you are good. In the darkest alley, you are good, oh, you are good. You are good, you are good. Oh, and you are good. You are good. Even when I don't feel it, you are good. Even though I think I don't feel it, you are good. I know you are good. I know you are good. You're a good, good father. Good, good Father, good, good Father you are. Oh, you always give us our heart's desires. You always have the best for me. I know you are good. Good, good God. You are good, good, good God. You are good, good, good God. And you are good, good, good God. You are good, good, good God. Oh, you are good. Oh, you 
just can't Lord, I can't to get life with living Then I'll stay Then I'll stay There's a prize There's a prize that awaits those who run the race I have a yearning inside to come up to the place As a magnet whose treasure out of the day
I see like a vortex forming. I almost sense that if there's anything that's in your life that's just holding you down, you know, like you feel anchored to the to the ground and anchored to the to the floor, come and stand in the middle here where the vortex is. Can can I have everybody with the rams on to come to the middle? As you are here in the middle, the ram's horns are going to release different levels of ascension. You respond with the spirit and just release what he wants you to do.
release your tongue.
congregation. I want you to all come stand here. One half this side and the other half that side. And as the dance team dances, we just want to respond and just receive what the Lord is releasing there. The dancers aren't for spectatorship, they're for engagement and releasing. So as the worship song goes or progresses, I've got that is here in the middle, and that you move in through it, representing the covering that we have in the bride, our relationship, intimacy with Jesus, and you come through and you just enter engagement, kneel, whatever you need to do. And just allow it to be a moment of activating and being in that intimacy with Jesus. Remember, it's activation. When you step through, you're stepping through something spiritual. And that Gateway. word will not return void. Oh, his word will not return void. Oh, his word will not return void. Until it's a So we don't have to go one through one. You can come more than. Yahweh's 
Spirit of the Lord, Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. This is a trade for all people. I'm trading my sorrows, I'm trading my shame, I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. lack of intimacy Jesus says come trade it away I'll give you my intimacy lack of affection lack of love lack of belonging lack of acceptance come trade it away receive what Jesus wants to give to you
his word will not return void. Oh, his word will not return void until it's accomplished. Until you. Until it's accomplished What it set out to do What it set out to do You're a song Jesus is taking away the old He's bringing in the new Or the next the way he's doing it, his intimacy is changing. The wine chamber, relationship with Jesus, going in deeper, going in wider, becoming vulnerable for what he wants to do in and through you. In Song of Solomon 5, from 2 to 3, and it says, I slept, but my heart was awake. Listen, my beloved is knocking. Open to me, my sister, my darling, my dove, my flawless one. My head is drenched with dew. My hair with the dampness of the night. <laughs> I have taken off my robe must I put it on again? I've washed my feet. Must I soil them again? My beloved reached into me to unlock my heart. The core of my very being trembled at his touch. How my soul melted when he spoke to me. My spirit arose to open for more of his touch. As I surrendered to him, I began to sense his fragrance, the fragrance of his suffering love. It was the sense of myrrh flowing all through me. That scripture just oozes with the intensity of love and that Jesus has towards you. There's a bride arising, which is a person as well as property, land, where Jesus is setting part a remnant of that is going to experience an intensity of his outpouring towards you. So in other words, he is moving in your life to bring you in a place of brokenness that you've never experienced before. Because we've got a remnant, cool man, you know, there's, I hear, we're the remnant, and we are. <laughs> but there's a remnant in the remnant. They're the ones that lie on the floor. They're not the ones that boast. They're not the ones that we are the remnant. They're the silent ones. But they are the ones who don't have to speak because the presence of Jesus is doing all of it. By being, by moving. Being where Jesus wants you to be, doing what Jesus wants you to do. But there's an intensity of surrender. You are going to cry like you've never cried before. When I went through my divorce, Jesus took me through a phase, and he's still doing that, of experiencing his love. So I don't know if it's because you are physically in a place of vulnerability and brokenness but i love how jesus takes a circumstance that is despised of the world 
And then he says, this is my gap. And he swooped in, day in, day out, I cried. Sometimes at church, but mostly behind the doors. Continuing to pour out as Jesus is starting to show himself. In that scripture, it says, open to me. Open for more of my touch. And we, we, we can easily flippantly say, oh, Jesus, touch me. I want more. And, you know, he's gracious and he does always. But there is an intimacy of that touch and the openness that is going to wreck you. It is going to bring you to a place of being completely undone. In that place of the brokenness, the oil is released. I don't like that saying when people say, less of me, more of you. Then he just shouldn't have created you, or at least released you into the physical realm. That's bollocks when people tell you, less of me and more of you. I get the heart behind it. He wants you to be more of Him. He wants you to be more of you because when you step in who you really are, you are the mirror image of Jesus. In this place, because Jesus is looking you eye to eye, and He says, are you ready? Are you ready for my touch and I want you to open up? Are you ready for my hand? Because in that scripture, she says, I see his hand move into my being. His robe was off. You don't have to read between the lines what that means. Stuff is going to get serious. Jesus came, and what was he? He was first vulnerable. He's standing in front of you, and he's saying, my robe is off. And we need to understand spiritually, he's taking the step, and he's saying, Edwin, I want all of you. Walter, I want all of you. It's easier for ladies, for men, when Jesus says, my robe is off, <laughs> then your brain sort of like works overtime. You know, it's like, that's a picture to work with. But if you know what happens in the spirit, there is a vulnerability that opens up that the gold that is embedded in you and the intimacy he wants to unlock in you is going to completely catapult you into ascended realms in his love, in his bliss, and into his fragrance. There's a reason why he speaks of fragrance, because fragrance carries the blueprint of what he wants to release. In front of the temple by the showbread, you had frankincense and myrrh burning. And the myrrh was a representation of the blood, the sacrifice. So in other words, the fragrance myrrh carries the blueprint of the blood of Jesus. So when you engage, when he says, I release the fragrance, he says, I'm releasing the blueprint for you to step in to activate your gates so that your gates can entangle with my gates so that you can unlock who you are in me. When Jesus says, I'm standing before you with my robe off, it means he's not looking at your sin. He's not looking at your issues. He's not looking at your debt, what your concerns are, or that you don't have work, or that you do have work, or if your salary is awesome, or if your salary buys a bread and a Coke. He takes all judgments away. Because that's in his robe and he drops it. 
And he says, all I have in my sight is you. You are the one that arouses him. You might not like that language, don't care. It's time we redeem sexuality for the kingdom of God. But when Jesus is aroused is when the sons of God are coming alive and his spirit is excited in the entanglement with you. And a dance starts to ensue that you start to ascend with him, going higher, going deeper. And all of a sudden, all the petty stuff that we worry about starts to fall away. Jesus says, don't be sin focused. Focus on inner progression than outer validation. The deeper we ascend into his love, because he's saying, I'm here and I want to put my hand into your spirit. We say, yay. But when he starts to do it, we get uncomfortable because it is intimacy that we do not even know of yet. There's a place where he's calling you as a son of God of complete surrender. His robe is off. He wants your robe off. And that robe that you need to take off might be guilt, condemnation, religion. This is not how we do church. You know, how can the pastor speak like that? When you have an encounter with the intimacy of Jesus, your language is going to change. But what is on that robe that you've got? Resentment, unforgiveness, shame, all those things. And Jesus says, I need you to come stand before me. My robe is off, so I don't give a rat's toenails what's bothering you. You got to get your robe off. Because when you stand naked in front of him, any preconceived idea, anything that you need as a validation to feel like a son of God, all of it starts to fall away and he sees right through as to who you are in him. You see, when Jesus takes off his robe, he is mirroring his reflection and his intimacy into you. When you take your robe off, you are mirroring your intimacy and fragrance and frequency back into him. When the two come together, you entangle with your primordial being of exactly who you are in the breath when he breathed you into a body. There is a holiness and a fear of the Lord that is returning into church. And it's going to shake, well, it is already shaking foundations. The scary, it's not scary when Jesus shakes. It's exciting, but it can be unnerving. But it means systems and programs are going to change. It means the way we've prayed and the way we've had intimacy and, and approaching Jesus is going to change. Because where he's taking you, that place of chosek, the deep, darkness of his love it is a realm where we don't have words to describe what he's going to do in and through you as a son of God that Hebrew word when it says open to me it means to conceive. So when Jesus says he wants you to open to him, it means he wants to deposit a seed. Look, when Jesus starts to talk sexually, it's intense. The church gets uncomfortable, you know. There's a seed that gets deposited in your spirit because he wants you to give birth to the next and the dimension of a love relationship with him. The seed will be deposited in you only with intimacy with Jesus. 
that entanglement in our prayer time, in our journal time, when we're on the carpet and we're in that place of surrender, or you're in the toilet at work and you just break down and you are crying and you are just releasing. He's standing with his robe off for you to conceive your next. When he wants you to conceive your next, it means the chamber of the womb or the intimacy incubator has changed. It's different. So in other words, he's rewiring you. He is reprogramming you to receive what he is releasing into you in your next. My spirit arose to open for more of his touch. That touch is the key unlocking the heart's desire to ascend into the intimacy chambers where love's conceived, the opening. Touch and opening are divine actions that release a frequency. It positions the desires of your heart to entangle with the fragrance of the king, ascending your heart frequencies into a divine love song of entanglement. When I was pondering about this stuff, I saw like a picture, a vision. It was a big circle. And, many, and, and, it, and it was the picture of the intimacy chamber. Everybody was standing around, but no one wanted to go into the middle. The circle had different circles within the circle. And they represented realms of release, realms of surrender, openness, and to that place of just complete surrender and saying, take me, Jesus, take me. Problem is no one stood in the middle. Everybody stood on the outside. They were nervous and scared. The people that were standing on the outside were holding bags. Some didn't want to let those bags go because they felt like the cost of leaving behind to go in the, in the middle was too big. The others held on to bags because it gave them comfort, security. Those bags resem resembled things that we were familiar with. Things that gave us valuation, validation, identity. And Jesus is calling to release, to drop those bags and allow him to move in with his hand into your spirit. And he says, Tala, now's the time. Now is the time of surrender. Now is the time of brokenness. Now is the time of release. Now is the time of stepping and saying, I want it. I want to go there. I want to do it. I'm at the place. I want to take my robe off. Jesus is looking for your vulnerability. That vulnerability means you're exposed. Exposed to things you might be doing in the dark exposed to things you might be struggling with, exposed to things that you've always hung on to. But the point isn't the exposure. The point is Jesus wanting you to surrender, irrespective of that stuff. And he says, let me in. Let me in. And I will ascend you into an intimacy and a relationship with me 
that you will not find any word to describe what I'm going to do in and through you. Jesus, I want to pray for everybody in front here. The scripture is beautiful, but I know it can be rough to stand before you and take our robe off. But we are new creation beings. We want all of you. We position our love gates within the realm of Mo. We entangle with that blueprint of the intimacy and the wine chamber of your love. We ascend from within the fragrance of your image. We catch the currents and we entangle with those crimson frequencies of your blood. I open the realms of my heart to surrender to your divine advance within me. And I put up my hand and I say, I want to let go. I want to drop my robe. My spirit yearns for your deep touch, Jesus. For your sacrificial love to be completely surrendered in and through me. As bride and groom entangle. Take me to your love chamber, Jesus. I open myself to you to receive what you want to plant and deposit in me. That that seed of destiny may grow into purpose and a blissful life and intimacy in Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just stay silent for a minute. Just allow that intimacy. Just let him entangle with your spirit. Okay, just stay like that as Marie and the dance team are coming. I want you to use it as an opportunity to trade that robe away and to receive what Jesus has for you.
Husbands, wives, come here. Come on. Let's go to the front. Let's do it.
There is a great movement in the earth. Many people are being moved by the signs and the wonders, by the gatherings, by the excitement, by the prophetic, and by the future grace that is flooding. But I say what we're singing tonight is a sign and a wonder. Behold, I tell you a mystery. The Lord does want to dance, for we are in a season that's called the season of the bride and the bridegroom. And God will reveal the mystery of the bride and the bridegroom. And yet I tell you now, the important part of this is that you be moved by he, the bridegroom. Not of your own accord, not of your own initiative, not of a certain body of teaching, not of a certain popularity, not of a certain gift. For in the true dance of romance, the bridegroom leads, and the bride devotionally and beautifully and harmoniously follows. Thank you to the dancing team. I trust that today activated just something in your heart to just going deeper in your intimacy with Jesus. That place of surrender and to just take me, take everything of me. I want it all. <laughs> I love you. You are super amazing. Um, I wanted to do something with the, with the directors, but I'm, I'm going to leave it for next week. But thank you for reminding me, because I, I needed to say that. <laughs> You're beautiful. I get why Jesus is infatuated with you, because you oaks are super hot. <laughs> Love you. You are welcome to spend time and have coffee, etc., and just visit. I want to thank the dance team and for the last couple of weeks, all the effort that has gone in and the amazing dances that you guys did. Your hearts were amazing. <laughs> the lovely lunch that we've had and um, epic stuff. You don't have to run away. Carry it outside with us. And um, I just pray that the Lord will bless you, keep you. His face will shine in and through you, that His glory will explode from your innermost being, and that you will encounter intimacy and a love relationship with Him like you've never done before. In Jesus' name, amen.